Taking action for you. 7 Action News starts right now. A couple's major loss, a wedding dress and other personal belongings swallowed up by a fire. Everything basically we worked for over the last eight years is gone. The community's quick response to make sure their wedding day will continue as planned. The search for a missing boater on Lake St. Clair continues this morning. What led up to a man jumping in the water and what caused others to lose sight of him? Good morning. I am live at the Detroit Historical Museum at their brand new exhibit called Detroit 67 Perspectives. And this is just one perspective, the news headlines. Detroit police busted a crowd of troublemakers. Of course, sounds very different depending on your perspective. You could say Detroit police assaulted a gathering of leaders instead. And that is what this exhibit is all about, perspective and the power of words. We'll have more from the museum coming up. Good morning, Metro Detroit. It is 8 o'clock on this Saturday morning. We're so glad you're with us. I'm Anu Prakash, and look who is back from maternity leave. Looking yes, fabulous. Nice to have you, you back here. Thank you. I'm so excited to be back, and I was actually telling Anu before the show, I was like, I want to make sure I don't talk like a baby. Like, oh, welcome back to Action News. <laughs> so if morning, I do everyone. that, everyone can yell at me. It's okay. I've been talking to a baby for 12 weeks. <laughs> you go. Very understandable. But you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll begin with a live look over campus marshes, and it is looking lovely, and we have a lot to talk about this morning. But first, so let's send it over to first, 7 First Alert meteorologist Denise Isaac. Good morning, Denise. Good morning, good morning Simon. Denise. <laughs> you got me cracking up. Well, this morning we're looking at mostly sunny skies. Our 7 First Alert radar not picking up on rain. We're expected to stay dry this morning, but by the afternoon we'll be tracking showers. So just make sure that sunglasses will be needed early, but by this afternoon we'll need the umbrella at some point. Temperatures currently are on the cooler side. 61 Carroll, 63 Lapeer, Flint, Port Huron, 66 in Detroit, the same for Mount Clements with a wind out of the southwest and temperatures behind that cold front really took a dip. And right now we're seeing a difference anywhere between five to close to eight degrees compared to this same time yesterday. So this morning temperatures will be on the cool side in the 60s with very few clouds and the wind out of the west, five to 10 miles per hour. But by this afternoon, the wind will pick up Cooling trend is expected this weekend. Temperatures won't be soaring into the 80s. So I'll let you know how cool it gets and when we exactly get some rain this afternoon. Right now, the search continues for a 45 year old boater from Redford who disappeared while trying to rescue someone in Lake St. Clair. This all happened yesterday afternoon in Macomb County near Metro Beach in Harrison Township when a group was returning from Jobby Nooner. Now, according to the Macomb County Sheriff's Office, the man was wearing a life jacket, but it wasn't secured and fell off. A third person jumped into the water to try and find him. Eventually, the first and third passengers made it back on the boat, but the group lost sight of that second passenger. Rescue crews searched the lake for about three hours but couldn't find him. As soon as we get an update from the sheriff's office, we will pass it along to you. The community is showing support for a couple in Wayne who lost everything in a house fire, including a wedding dress. A transformer exploded during Thursday night's storm, sparking flames in the back of their home. Now the gown that Hope Kaminsky planned to wear down the aisle in August was among the many personal items destroyed in the fire. She had just gotten that dress altered that same day. As Hope was running out of the house, she says she only had time to save their dog Tatum. We had to go get the dog who was hiding in the bathroom and pick him up the dress, the decorations, basically everything is gone. If you want to help, you can make a donation on their GoFundMe page, and you can find that link on our website at WXYZ.com. So far, more than $1,200 has been raised. The Michigan lobbyist who was shot during a GOP baseball practice in Virginia is now recovering at home. Take a look. This picture of Matt Micah was posted on Twitter yesterday, shortly before he was released from the hospital. The shooting happened back on June 14th during a practice for a charity game. Four people, including Micah and Republican House Whip Steve Scalise, were hurt. Micah had been shot multiple times and had several surgeries. That gunman was shot by Capitol Police and died. 
The highly anticipated exhibit Detroit 67 Perspectives will open today at the Detroit Historical Museum. Channel 7 played a big part in helping to pull the display together. The exhibit spans 150 years with highlights of Detroit's history 50 years before 1967, the 50 years since, and the possibilities in the next 50 years to come. 7 Action News reporter Jennifer Ann Wilson joins us live now with a sneak peek. This is really a fascinating exhibit, Jennifer Ann. It is, and beyond just fascinating, it is considered one of the most technologically advanced museum exhibits right now in the country. They really come at you uh, with a lot of very different ways to get engaged in their exhibits. This specific one, as you can see, it is an army tank. And believe it or not, this is really the most vivid memory that out of 500 interviews that they've done that seemed to be that almost everybody had was of a military vehicle or an army tank driving through their neighborhood, through the streets of Detroit. And uh, they've actually created an exhibit right here that is illustrated using real voices of Detroiters telling their stories. And uh, a pretty powerful, this sort of begins with the beginning of a day. So um, you're kind of hiding in back here in the corner. Merrill, you're, you, you've had a, a big hand in the entire, uh, in the entire exhibit here, and this is a pretty powerful part of it. Yeah, yeah. I'm the project director of Detroit 67, looking back to move forward. And what this does is really summarizes our efforts in terms of how we reached out to every Detroiter, suburbanite, it doesn't matter, to help tell this story. A story this big takes all of us. So when you have over 500 oral histories, your job is to piece it together and give people perspective on where we've been, how we got there, what happened, and where we are today. And this right here, as people are starting about feeling their house shake, you can almost feel, feel that here. It's a very kind of immersive having this view. It's a pretty powerful thing. And it says this is not a reenactment. These are the voices of Detroiters telling their stories. And this, of course, is a, uh, is a powerful presentation and a powerful part of this. But all morning long, we've been really looking at different perspectives of that week and what led up to that week and a lot of a lot of fires a lot of violence a lot of hard things to remember but there's also some positive parts of this uh this summer of 67 that you have represented here as well yeah a lot was lost during that time there was a lot of damage but you got to remember the heart of detroiters and the will of detroiters never went away Detroit never died. People got up, they helped, they worked together, they connected from all walks of life. A lot of people don't realize that that story didn't have a period. There were things that happened afterwards, right? You had kids, you had neighbors, you had a lot of people who cared. What I think gets lost sometimes is that good news doesn't travel as fast as bad news does. And people did come together, so there's a balance. That's why the project is called Detroit 67 Perspectives, right? The, the exhibition, because there were a lot of different perspectives, a lot of stories that need to be told. Not one person experienced it the same way, but more importantly, people didn't give up. White flight, capital flight, those things started before 67, but people stayed. A lot of people stayed and they fought and they're still fighting. 500 people you interviewed from uh, from the suburbs, from the city, from police officers, to people in the hospitals, from the people who were a part of this. So many different perspectives, all shared through a number of interactive multimedia exhibits. It's very immersive, educational, and it's definitely uh, uh, an exhibit you do not want to miss. It opens to the public today at 10 a.m. It is free. What are the hours this weekend real quick? We open at 10 a.m and we're open it and we close at 5 p.m. 10 to 5. 10 okay. to 5. Perfect. 10 to 5, you guys. Come on by. Back to you guys. All right, Jennifer Ann, thank you. Looking back to uh, look forward. Thanks so much. Well, happening today, the taps will be flowing for the first ever craft beer festival in Northville. Tapped in the Ville will feature breweries like Founders, Griffin Claw, Roke, and Sagatuck. In addition to beers, there will be food trucks, live entertainment, and a cornhole tournament. $30 will get you 10 three-ounce samples, a festival mug, and registration for that tournament. The festival will take place at Millennium Park on Six Mile, and it runs from noon until 6. It is day two of the annual GM River Days Festival on the Detroit Riverfront. The celebration spans from Millican State Park to just past the Rensen. There is lots of live music, food, and activities for the whole family. You'll also be able to enjoy the ever popular air show and even some zip lining. The festival runs wow. from 11 to 10. Tickets are $3 before 3 p.m. After that, they are $5 each. That's fun, That's interesting. Right? Yeah. Zip lining. Yeah. That's yeah. Right cool. there on the riverfront. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. Well, and there are a lot of festivals 
festivals going on this weekend across Metro Detroit, so everyone wants to know what's the weather going to be like. Well, we're talking about cool mornings with lots of sunshine and then afternoon rain. I'll let you know where it impacts the most. Also coming up on 7 Action News this morning, a major change to the Tigers pitching staff who was released after a low performance last night and this season. Plus a dispute over the new Pistons Arena, why funding for the project is making people butt heads. You're watching 7 Action News this morning. Tempers flared during a meeting to explain the details behind the funding deal for the new Detroit Pistons Arena. The session was held last night inside the historic People's Community Church in Detroit. Detroit Councilwoman Mary Sheffield was the host. Things got heated when one of her constituents told her that the $34.5 million in public funding approved for the little, new Little Caesars Arena could be spent better elsewhere. Sir, I'm actually going to cut you off because that's a bit disrespectful. In my meeting with my residents, you can leave. Okay, because the people in, this, the people in here know who I, who I work for. The people here know who I work for. That's why I'm hosting this meeting. That's why I'm, that's my votes do. My votes do. You can leave, sir. Sheffield voted for the tax incentive. However, she says she's now could change her vote after hearing from concerned Detroiters. The Tigers continued their West Coast trip with the same results last night. In the bottom of the second inning, Austin Hedges of the Padres hit an RBI double to the outfield off of Tigers pitcher Michael Fulmer. That scored a run and would be all the Padres needed. In the eighth inning, Tigers manager Brad Osmus was thrown out of the game, arguing a check swing third strike call on Ian Kinsler. The Tigers were shut out 1-0. That is their seventh loss in a row. Both teams will play tonight just after 10. But before yesterday's game, the Tigers made a move involving the pitching staff. Justin Rose has more on your morning sports. Good morning, everyone. The Tigers making a move that many fans had been clamoring for for almost the whole season. They released closer Francisco Rodriguez on Friday afternoon. In just 25 innings pitched this year, K-Rod gave up 22 runs, nine of them of the home run variety. Two nights ago, the Grand Slam in Seattle seemed to be the final straw. General Manager Al Avila said it was a tough thing to do to, to cut the veteran, but that he handled it professionally. Of course, Al Avila also told the media yesterday in San Diego that they are open for the trading business. Avila said he will start listening to other teams looking for a trade now instead of waiting until closer to the trade deadline in July. He also did say he won't be seeking trades out himself, but added that he hopes these guys can turn it around. The first round of the NHL draft was held in Chicago. Gary Bettman, of course, booed heavily, but in the ninth pick, the Red Wings went with center Michael Rasmussen, a six foot six guy, smooth hands and playmaking ability, big upside, but probably a couple of extra years before we see him playing with the big club. He's tallied 55 points in 50 games last season in the Western Hockey League in Canada. Strengths are clogging up the net, scoring on the power play, and he even admitted he'd have been disappointed if he wasn't picked up by Detroit when they were up. It's been something special. I can't really put it into words, but uh, you know we're so thankful to play for Stride City, and you know I'm really thankful for this moment. But he can play center. Obviously, he's a big man uh, with a lot of character. Uh, he was just named captain of Tri Cities of the uh, Western Hockey League, so we got a great big man with skill um, and a lot of character. The Piston newest draft pick, Luke Kennard, in Detroit on Friday. The 12th overall pick can certainly shoot it and create offense on his own. But Stan Van Gundy, of course, quick to mention his defense. Maybe not NBA ready just yet. All of that stuff, of course, will come with practice, but yesterday was all about the celebration. Just to hear my name called was, it was truly a blessing, and, and like I said, it was a dream come true. Um, you know, sacrificed a lot to, to be put in this position and to have an opportunity at a, at a great place like this, um, it just means so much to me. Plenty of young faces will be seen around Little Caesars Arena in the next couple of years. That's your sports update for this Saturday morning. Have yourself a great day. Inkster Spring Hill Missionary Baptist Church is holding its inaugural community extravaganza today. The event runs from noon until four this afternoon. Highlights will include bounce houses, games, and face painting all for free. There will also be free food, free haircuts, and simple braids for the first 15, first 15 children, along with free blood pressure screenings, a Zumba class, and entertainment. All children under 15 must be accompanied by an adult. Lots of outdoor festivals today, but the question is, will the weather hold up?
<laughs> and you know, we have a live look over Ann Arbor and uh, it's looking great right now. Yeah, this morning is starting out just perfect under mostly sunny skies, cooler, drier air around here. But by this afternoon, there are few showers that could develop. I'm saying don't cancel your outdoor plans because of the rain I'm forecasting. Just make sure you have your umbrella with you because they will just <laughs> pass along really yeah. quick as we will have the breeze out of the west up to 20 miles per hour. So the showers won't be in one place for a really long period of time. So here are weather headlines. Cooler and less humid this morning. Below average temperatures expected this weekend. And we continue to track afternoon rain chances both today tomorrow and on Monday. So current reading in Detroit 66 degrees under mostly sunny skies. The wind out of the west at 12 miles per hour. Sunrise happened at 558 sunset at 914. Temperatures elsewhere 64 Ann Arbor 63 in Jackson. The same for Pontiac and Port Huron overall. A pleasant gorgeous morning across Metro Detroit and temperatures across our state are on the cooler side, mainly over the UP where we're waking up at least in Sioux Ste. Marie at 52, Marquette 54 and 58 in Gaylord. High pressure is in control, but we do have an upper level low spinning over the Great Lakes. So because of that, with daytime heating, once we get that sunshine going, then we'll start to develop the afternoon rain showers as we get this dip in the jet stream. And that will be the pattern for Saturday, Sunday and Monday. So here we go. Let's just put our future cast into motion. Here come the rain showers after 2 p.m. Very spotty in nature, very few and far in between. But where we do get the rain mostly after 3 p.m., like over the thumb, that's where we could be dealing with some heavy downpours. That's why I'm saying if you're going out here in the city, maybe going to Howell, just keep your rain gear with you. But if you're north of I-69, that's where we're expecting the at least the showers to be heavy at times. And even there's a small chance for hail. So the best chance for rain today will be north of I-69 to the south, very isolated in nature. Tonight we dry out and then tomorrow we'll begin to see the same scenario with afternoon rain showers. If you're headed boating today, best chance for rain will be at Lake Huron and also Lake St. Clair. So just keep an eye on the sky. The wind out of the west 10 to 15 knots, so that will make the seas or at least the ocean a bit choppy. So today we're looking at a high of 77 bright early with afternoon rain tonight. 56 degrees, so a little cooler compared to this morning and tomorrow's high only 72 with a 30% chance for rain by Monday 54 degrees in the morning warming up only to 70 and finally on Tuesday we dry out and we warm up as well a high of 74. Now here's Anna Marie. A few issues you should be aware of this weekend when you hit the roads 275 northbound between Eureka and Ford will be down to one lane starting Friday at 9 until Sunday at 5 a.m. A big construction project this weekend 75 northbound from the state line to the Dixie Highway that's 15 miles will be down to one lane. They're doing some road resurfacing there. It starts Friday at 9, wraps up Monday at 6 a.m. So it might impede on your morning drive on Monday. 75 northbound from Springwells to Clark will have one lane open as well. That starts Saturday 5 a.m. until 5 a.m. on Monday. And our final project this weekend, 75 northbound from Mac to 94. Only one lane will be open starting Friday at 10 until Monday at 5 a.m. I'm Anne Marie LaFlame. Back to you. A breaded chicken recall just in this morning. Up next, why you may want to toss some frozen Maxi Canada products. You're watching 7 Action News on this Saturday morning. Check your freezer. Maxi Canada is recalling its breaded chicken products because of misbranding and undeclared allergens. The products may contain milk, which is not listed on the product label. They include yummy brand chicken breast fries, nuggets and Dino Buddies. The items were produced between June 1st of last year and June 1st of this year. If you purchased any of these products, you should either throw them out or return them. And we have a full list of the affected products on our website at WXYZ.com. Aspen Dental is offering free dental care for veterans today as part of its Healthy Mouth Movement. The offer runs from 9 until 3 today only and registration is required. Appointments are available on a first come first serve basis and you can call the number there on your screen to schedule an appointment. The Aspen Dental offices in Michigan are located in Sterling Heights, Brighton, Chesterfield, 
Fort Gratiot and in the Lake Orion Auburn Hills area. Well, today a popular children's store is returning to Novi. This morning, American Girl will open its doors at 12 Oaks Mall. The 6,000 square foot store will feature an assortment of American Girl dolls, outfits and accessories. The store opens at 10 and tickets are required to get in. Girls who take part in the grand opening celebration will also get a free gift. The temporary store will remain open through January. I can only imagine just the line of girls <laughs> just like squealing with excitement to get in there, to right? Need a ticket to get in. That's <laughs> yeah, amazing. That just shows you yeah, how <laughs> popular it is. Well, there's much more to come in our next half hour, including stories from Howell, Brighton, and Detroit. And that's where you find our Jennifer Ann live at the Detroit Historical Museum. I sure am. It's a brand new exhibit. Come on in, guys. Uh, this is just one small portion of it here, a storefront in which they take you through step by step what it might have been like had you been on the streets of Detroit in the summer of 1967 when the fires and the vandalism all began after that blind pig bus. It's all about perspectives, 500 of them, and you'll be shocked at what you hear and amazed at how they presented it all. I'll have a preview coming up. Plus, a kit to keep you safe during an active shooter situation. The three men who developed the kit will explain how it works. You're watching 7 Action News this morning. Taking action for you. 7 Action News starts right now. And good morning. Welcome back to 7 Action News this morning. We want to send you outside and give you a live look outside over downtown Detroit there. Nothing but sunshine and some blue skies and feeling pretty refreshing out there this morning. It is. It's beautiful out. Look at that. Well, let's check in with 7 First Alert meteorologist Denise Isaac to give us a little bit of an update on what today's forecast is. Hey, Denise. Hello. What a great way to start our weekend under mostly sunny skies and those blue skies. We're expecting temperatures to not warm up much. If you don't like uh, at least the humidity and the heat that we had the past couple of days, you will love the forecast this weekend. Temperatures currently 63 Carroll, the same for Port Huron, Pontiac, 64 Ann Arbor and 66 in Detroit with a dew point in the mid 50s. Yesterday we we're talking dew points in the low 70s, so that's why the air was just so sticky and uncomfortable. Well, today we're waking up to a crisp and fresh air as you head out the door. The wind out of the west northwest anywhere between 5 to 15 miles per hour. We're expecting the wind to increase this afternoon. Gusts close to 25 miles per hour, but we're also talking rain chances this afternoon. Best chance for rain will happen north of the city. Temperatures will range anywhere between 73 to 77 degrees, but coming up, we'll talk about the exact timing of the rain and what's the best day of the weekend to be outdoors. Thanks, Denise. Well, three men from the Brighton area are on a life saving mission. They've come up with a kit to use during a situation where there's an active shooter involved. Now, the kit is called the Templar Life Safety System and it includes a uh, weapon, trauma kit, and radio. We're told the most important part is the training and that emergency crews and other people would need to be trained on this system. Check out, this is how it works. Present my credentials, scan my eyes. That allows me access to the vault. Okay. I can then put on the rapid responder vest and answer the two-way hands-free call back to 911 confirming that there is an active shooter in the building. Just that quick, I'm in the hallway and I can apply pressure to the bad guy. Uh, pistol, rifle, taser, or even pepper spray. In development is a live streaming to a 911 call center. The developers say the kit is similar to insurance. It's something you need to have, but hopefully never have to use it. Governor Rick Snyder is wrapping up his week long trade trip to Europe, and it looks like it was a productive one. After meeting with business executives in France, Germany and Italy, Snyder says a major automotive supplier could potentially expand its operations to Michigan. Snyder also says an Italian biotech company is considering Michigan for a U.S. location. The governor's trip was meant to touch base with companies that already have a presence in the state and also explore new opportunities. Well, 50 years later, an immersive exhibit is detailing the tragic events of the 1967 uprising. Seven Action News teamed up with the Detroit Historical Society to provide footage from that summer that was seen right here on WXYZ. Our Jennifer Ann Wilson joins us live with an inside look. 
If you've heard about what happened during the summer of 1967, you've probably heard about the Elgers Motel, whether you call it an incident or just cold-blooded murder. Multiple books have been written about it. There's a movie that's going to be coming out very soon. So this is definitely one of the more well-known elements of the summer of 1967 here in Detroit. But there are many people that, and many things that happened, many people that were involved that you may not have heard of. And that's why we have Joel here. You are the curator of this exhibit, a historian, and and talk about some of the people that maybe the public isn't as familiar with. Well, if the, if the Algiers Motel represents kind of the worst of human nature in Detroit, the rest of the story is wonderful in that Detroiters uh, did everything they could to help fellow Detroiters. There were lots of stories of, uh, you know, the firemen helping people, trying to save people, individuals coming out of the, you know, the, the, the woodwork to help people who needed help, it, for, it, whether it's getting their stuff out of their burning houses or getting them to the hospital. The hospitals themselves were inundated, and, and we tell that story here of, you know, doctors and nurses who worked around the clock for days. Angels under pressure is what it says there, and you can see an image, and with so much being burned from stores to homes, there's probably a lot of people with nowhere to go. Well, and to that effect, they, they had no place to buy food. They had no place to buy, you know, diapers and things like that, so that there were um, churches and, and local community organizations coming out of the woodwork to get people food and milk. I was talking to a gentleman yesterday who brought in milk from Ann Arbor because that's people around southeastern Michigan were stepping up to help the folks who were affected. And speaking of, you were just talking to somebody yesterday. In order to put together this exhibit, which took more than two years, you interviewed 500 people from a variety of different perspectives to try to present the full story. Oh, certainly. We couldn't tell this ourselves. We had to let the community tell this story. And this is a sensitive story. It's not a story that everybody wants to necessarily remember or think about. How did you approach this to make sure that it was balanced and that it is representative of everyone's real experience? Well, there's, there's lots and lots of primary source material out there, lots of secondary source material. We talked, again, to all the oral history people. We talked to scholars. We talked to people in the community who were there or understood the ramifications of that. And we brought all those stories together over two years and blended them, balanced them, and then told them. And found very powerful ways to tell them, and we won't be able to watch all of this, but I know, ladies, you've seen a little bit of this before, but this is an illustration that is matched with audio interviews of people who lived through, who were there, who saw outside their window, woke up to a beautiful day to look out their window and see fires and military vehicles driving down their streets. It's an incident that lasted a week, right? About a week, and it has really uh, marked our city, and it's been a, 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 an incident that we want to more deeply understand so we don't repeat our history here in Detroit. We want to continue moving forward, and this exhibit has a whole nother wing to help those who walk through here do just that. I'll be live here all morning long in Detroit. Back to you guys. Thanks so much. It seems so interesting. I'm really curious to be down there and, and learn more. I know. We were just saying we, we both want to go and be there. Thank you so much, Jennifer Ann. Farmington Public Schools is hosting a job fair today to find a few good bus drivers. It runs from 10 until 2 at the Maxfield Education Center on West 10 Mile. The district is looking for both full and part-time drivers. Pay starts off at $15 an hour. You must be at least 21 with a valid driver's license to apply. If you're interested, you can find more information on our website. Just go to WXYZ.com. 836 right now, still ahead this morning, our person of the week, but this time, well, it's not just one person. <laughs> That's right, we introduce you to a power couple who's bringing people across the world together to show them what America is truly like. They are both retired educators with multiple degrees and one speaks multiple languages. But it's a language of love and respect they use to do their part in bringing the world together right inside their Bloomfield Hills home. Glenda Lewis introduces us to our person of the week couple. There's a pillow on a chair in their family room that speaks to exactly who they are. We just love each other. Yeah, we're best friends. And after 52 years of marriage and counting, 
the tie that binds this Bloomfield Hills couple is now their commitment to help bring the world together. It's important for us to bring people here to see what real America is like. For the last 20 years, Jim and Pi Wolf had been acting as citizen diplomats for a nonprofit called Global Ties Detroit. Global Ties Detroit hosts U.S. State Department sponsored visiting delegations for professional exchange programs. We're the private arm for the State Department to try to promote international relations here in Detroit. And when these visitors come here, Jim and Pi open their heart and their home. I would say we probably had 50 to 60. Belarus, mm -hmm. Kenya. Here is their wall of fame, all of the people that have stayed with them. They are adults, mostly from like 20 years old to 50, 55, but they're studying a certain topic. We put together a program for them for that period of time. They find that the people of Detroit are just so friendly and caring and receptive. It just changes their opinion. And when the group leaves, it is always with a promise to return the favor. We always tell them we will come to see you and they never believe us. And we show up and they're like, oh my gosh. Jim and Pi track their travels on a map on a wall in their pantry. The black lines indicate everywhere they've been. We've been to all five stands, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, and Kazakhstan. And and the list goes on, but they always give back by sharing each experience. Jim and Pai have taught in China six times and even worked to help U.S. aid programs in Russia and its former republics host delegations three times a year. We're one family in the world, you know, and we really live that. They're just such kind-hearted people with a great sense of humor. Uh, they really want to show the best of Detroit, the best of America to these international leaders. So for being a small part of changing the world's perceptions of Detroit and America, Jim and Pi Wolf, you are our people of the week. We all want, you know, water, food, uh, a comfortable house, doesn't mm -hmm. have to be big, mm -hmm. you know, and a good job, education for our children. Oh, what a lovely couple, right? Glenda also found out that another group from Russia is coming to stay with Jim and Pai at the end of July. And the couple plans to visit the Armenian judges who are at their home in March. They have three children, including an adopted son from China and grandchildren as well. Yeah, congratulations to Jim and Pai Wolf. Nice to have a couple yes. of the week, right? <laughs> All right, still to come this morning, we're going to get a taste of this weekend's Opa Fest as a chef cooks up one of the event's main authentic dishes right here in studio. And I think there's some salivating going on here. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and while crops may be spared, a heat wave in California is affecting farmers in other ways. We'll explain coming up next. Well, on this morning, we're not dealing with a heat wave here. Temperatures have actually cooled down and it feels more like fall. I'll let you know when temperatures heading back to 80 coming up on 7 Action News this morning.